thank you sir tame amar invitation swikariyu ne you agreed to participate in the interaction with the with us uh, sir we want if you can introduce yourself first sir please so sure. my name is uh, ratin raval uh, i practice at the gujarat high court and consumer court at two courts i don't take up any other cases mm-hmm. so those are the two basic courts where i practice uh, i have few colleagues working with me i have my own office uh, i have been practicing since uh, 2005 now mm-hmm. so it's almost 15 odd years that i have spent in this field in total right so that's basically uh, what is i i deal with all types of cases uh, primarily more so of the insurance cases because i'm on the panel of several insurance companies but mm-hmm. i also have private matters uh, land matters criminal matters uh, and other matters as well and really? that's uh, the variety of work which i get which is something i enjoy mm. right so we just want to know how were your childhood days uh, and uh, what specific instances that you have that you have along with you till now that you have spent in your school during your school time school, school time was more like fun uh, less of learning to be honest as all most students would have done it we are more into you know playing cricket all day that's mm-hmm. what we, we, i was a decent student it's i always used to come in top 10 it's, it was not i was a bad student so uh-huh. i was more interested in cricket uh, watching movies when i was growing up in the 80s Mm. uh i was in, there were only movie theaters and vcr so but my family atmosphere was such that we used to watch a lot of movies so right. that's how we grew uh, side by side studying and studying was also with the in focus because my father is a doctor my mother is an advocate so it's okay. that study was focus but uh, everything uh, was uh, allowed in our home in terms of the boundaries that you can play you can read i used to mm. read books a lot because my father used to be a is is a good reader so mm-hmm. uh, that's how i grew up uh, in my school days mm. so what portion of that school days you carry along with you till date what that is with you till like till date would be i think the reading part i used to read even while i was in school i used to read books uh, not just study books i'm saying i'm saying uh, novels or stories i used mm-hmm. to read so reading mm-hmm. is something which comes naturally to me so i don't get bored by reading files uh, most advocates find challenging is if they have big books or a big file they get bored right uh, because i have been used to reading since childhood uh, mm-hmm. there is always a boredom up after a certain point of time because you read so many files you get bored but my threshold limit is slightly higher than most other people so i don't get bored i can even at 10 at night i can read a file Uh, hmm. I feel motivated enough, so that is something I've carried from my childhood is the reading part, which uh, directly involves our profession. Right, sir. Was the advocacy was your first preference as a career? Uh, most most people will tell you it is not, and hmm. that includes me. The first thing I wanted to be as a cricketer, uh, hmm. growing up, uh, I was very very passionate about cricket. Hmm. I even appeared for the under 16 uh, selection, mm-hmm. but then I found out when I went for selection, there were so many talented people. I was really scared hmm. that there's nothing much I can do. There, are, there are so many talent, more talented people. So I dropped out of the selection, right? Uh, uh, team selection. Hmm. Then I thought I have to be associated with cricket, so I went for the umpiring exam. Hmm. So, in laws came from uh, cricket actually. So mm. I used to carry uh, most people carry bags. I would carry a whole kit bag of bat, ball, stump, and all cricket law book. Mm-hmm. So being on ground in the entire ground didn't know me as a person uh, by name, but they would know this is the person who carries a law book, you know, cricket uh-huh. laws book with. Right. So, so I wanted to be a cricket umpire. Then I thought even this will not work out as a profession. So then uh-huh. I thought I'll become a cricket writer uh-huh. someday. but then again again in 90s it was not lucrative enough you know to become a cricket writer and earn a living <laughs> so i thought it would be hard to work out so the fourth option was let me do science then because of father was a doctor so i took up science but again science didn't interest me that much so after 12th i was very sure that i will become an advocate post 12th science so how come it has been you have, it was so sure that what was that made you sure for you becoming an advocate because 
I, I used to read uh, John Grisham novels. Uh, mm -hmm. So law used to invoke me a lot. Mm. Even courtroom dramas, over the top courtroom dramas of Bollywood, uh, mm. I used to like them. Uh, mm. Arguing is, my mother was an advocate. I used to see how she works. Uh, mm. Medical profession was something I could never take up. That mm. was something was I was not at all interested. But arguing a case or writing or drafting was I, I found it interesting. Uh, how to win a case in Pinot at Coma. Uh, right. so that's what. Uh, so that's something interesting interested me. So after twelfth, I was sure that I want to become an advocate. But we didn't have a five-year law course back then. So mm. I took up graduation, which everybody has to. So I took a BSc, mm. and then I did law. So law from post twelfth onwards, I was pretty sure. Very I want well. to do law. Acha. So, and the issue, the question is then, sir, whether you have been working for, uh, I mean, during your studies uh, from BCom to till completion of your LLB, BSc till completion of your LLB, have you been working along on the, uh, with the, uh, with I was, I was, I was party work, not much working when I did BSc because I was in, a, my parents were in a small town. Hmm. And I went to a like a bigger town for my studies, uh, hmm. so I didn't have anything when I was doing graduation BSc. Hmm. But when I joined law from day one, I joined uh, one of the advocates who was working as the district government leader DGP. Mm -hmm. uh, his office. I just went there for uh, which city, uh, sir? Which city, if you can please share? Rajkot. 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 Right. Right. So, uh, for three years continuously, I would go to college. Our college was afternoon, so in the morning I would go to the court. Mm -hmm. uh, Afternoon college, and then again evening, I may go to his office. Uh, mm. So that's how I spent my day for three years. So by the mm. time I was graduated, I knew the basics. As uh, for example, I knew what a charge sheet was, or what right. an FIR was. Correct. And those days in college, there was not much practical training as it is now. If you now go to a, you know, mm. big national law universities or mm. my law university, you get so much practical exposure. Mm. It was not the norm uh, for 10, 15, 20 years. So Hmm. That's how I learned the basics during law itself. Right. Uh, sir, uh, when, while you were studying law uh, from the Rajkot Law College, uh, were you seriously studying law or it was a casual studies? I was the most serious student in my class. We had two law colleges in Rajkot. Huh. Our college was the first law college which opened was an English, which was an English medium law college. There was another college which was not an English. Can you just name your alma mater, sir? Which, what is the name of your sure. college? It's, it's a K A Pandi English medium law college. K okay. A is Pandi. an kangaroo. A is an apple. K K is an mm. kangaroo. A is an apple. Mm. K A Pandi. P A N D H I Pandi. Mm. English medium law college. Okay. The college itself was so proud to call itself English medium law. English medium They named it. You yeah, be an English medium. They named it as English. Yeah. And we we were about hardly 15 students because we had a fees of rupees 5,000, which was very high during that time. 15 years mm -hmm. back, 5,000 was big amount. Correct. And the government law college had about 300 rupees uh, fees. True. As against that, yes. Yeah. So no compulsory attendance uh, mm -hmm. in examination. Also, it was okay. In our college, it was very strict. You had to appear for exams very strictly. Uh, classes had to be attended. Uh, mm. So we were, it was a serious college. But it was like a, with the private tuition kind of college because there were only 15 students. Oh. So we had one-on-one -on -one interactions a lot. Uh, it was not uh, very crowded. And I was the most serious student. I was the only one going to court daily. So, and after last month of the exam, I would shut the, all the doors and just read, you know, not uh, communicate with anybody. The day of exams, my relatives would call me to say, best of I would not even pick up their phones. They would get so angry on me. I was so focused on my studies and everybody used to laugh at me. That right. uh, You cannot be so serious in law exams because 15 years back, nobody was so serious in law exams. But I was very serious in my studies. Then that's the first, uh, you are the first one who has actually told me this, that you've been serious during the law exams. I've been interacting with not less than uh, six, seven advocates by now since morning. And you are the first one which, uh, where I got this thing of being serious, a serious one. Uh, really so, so what actually you carry with you uh, from your law college till now on, on the legal aspect? On the legal aspect, because uh, we used to uh, we used to study very seriously, hmm. uh, I used to refer books, uh, um, you know, very in a very bookish manner. So hmm. 
even now if i have to refer something i always go back to books even though we have now softwares and everything i like the feel of the book hmm. so uh, i used to study a lot so crpc ipc water it is uh, nobody can be an expert hmm. but uh, because we were used to reading it a lot hmm. that still helped me in my profession i can always go back to the books and read hmm. uh, that is something i always uh, took from college and also we used to have a lot of interactions when i was only practical student going to court so the professors would tell me that today we have a class of bail let uh, rathin say something about bail like applications hmm. so because i was only one going to court so okay. i would have heard a bail application in court because i was with the uh, district government office so we hmm. used to have five bails a day so for me a bail was not a big deal hmm. uh, so hmm. i would speak about a practical case i heard so uh, i used to take up classes not in terms of teaching but you know but just it, interacting it's on the practical purpose hmm. on a practical aspect so i would just come in the front of the class and uh, speak mm. about bail applications or anything civil suit uh, mm. any basic stuff not mm. that i was much educated and knew a lot of about a uh, mm. lot about uh, such subjects but whatever mm. little i knew so that is something i carried from college uh, you know being very studious and everybody look up to me that if this is a topic he would at least know so i had to maintain certain standards even though i was not uh, you know well known with a subject i had to be well researched but we students expected me to be researched acha so i was always prepared whenever there was any subject you know new subject coming up i would one day in advance read up that tomorrow is x subject is going to be taught let me you know mm. have some background homework so at least i know by the time it starts mm. so that's something i read from my college true so what do you find what difference you find in present education system and the education that you have actually undergone i think it's now it's very different now uh, colleges i've go- i've gone f- for a semester to teach uh, one of the prominent uh, universities here so mm. i i just went for the experience purpose i wanted to see how the students are studying now what is the curriculum now mm. it's gotten much better uh, practical things are uh, from first semester itself you can go to different advocates to get internships i get mm. so many interns every time uh, there is internship period in different colleges hmm. uh, people have moot court exams we had just one moot court in entire three years hmm. uh, and that to somebody some professor had heard there is something like moot court so let's have a moot court nobody knew what a moot court was hmm. so just uh, we had one moot court now there are international moot court competitions so there is much more exposure in students now hmm. uh, as compared to when i studied so i find that the students who graduate now are more, much more polished they mm. know many more things because they've interned uh, so many places some people go to supreme court high court uh, different advocates district courts uh, so students now seem to be more you know uh, much more polished uh, much more studious mm. uh, they are not as dedicated maybe uh, in terms of working as say i was Mm. but certainly they seem to be more knowledgeable than i was at that age right sir so do you suggest any changes that is to be imparted or incorporated in the present legal education system actually uh, we have not brought this up but i also went to united states for a couple of years uh, post uh, i received my llb degree and mm. i worked for a law firm there uh, mm. so and then i came back to india and restarted my practice mm. uh, so i have seen how international uh, lawyers work mm. uh, their way of functioning how they deal with uh, legal aspects so their legal system is completely different mm. from our legal system like why my examination was five questions 20 marks uh, mm. write a short note on 30 to murder mm. that pattern mm. and if you go to uh, a country like united states they might give you the ipc or the criminal code yeah, there is a criminal code you can mm. refer any section that you want to but they'll give you a practical problem that suppose mm. this is a murder case you, you are defending your client your client is accused of so and so mm. here is the book if you want you can refer any sections that you want to but just mm. write a brief as to how would you defend your client mm. that is a kind of legal system that uh, international uh, universities have and ours is more like mugging up or you know, remembering stuff it's a memory based test Hmm. how much you remember the sections even now as you know practically we don't remember all the sections even we carry books correct i don't remember all the sections unless hmm. you are dealing they are dealing with some matters you tend to remember the important sections but not right. every crpc ipc section that you remember 
Yeah. Uh, somebody asks you what is a theft section, you might Google it up or you check a book, but mm. uh, you don't need to mug it up. Right. Our system is totally, you know, that we need to change. Instead of memory based, you need to be more practical based examiners. That is a change I am looking forward from all the universities in the future, at least if they can develop. Very well, sir. Sir, after completing your legal studies, how have you started your practices with whom you have worked with? Who was who your senior then and where have you started? That, I think one should charter their own path. So I was, you know, I had hardly any guidance as to how to start. I hmm. studied my law in Rajkot. Then, as they say that you throw somebody in the swimming pool, the person starts learning to learn to swim. That's hmm. how somebody threw me to high court in Gujarat High Court and said, you start practice here. Hmm. So I didn't know what to do. I didn't have any senior. I was disillusioned. But hmm. I used to get some matters. Uh, I had some uh, contacts uh, in Rajput. So they used to send me some matters. Hmm. So, but I didn't have any senior to guide me. But it's, therefore, every matter was a challenge. So even if I would get a bail matter, I had to hmm. research so much. I had to hmm. find out a uh, sample from, you know, some from other advocate or from clerk. Hmm. How a bail is drafted, I don't know. Hmm. Please give me a... Uh, mm. you know, draft. So I would look at the draft, then I would look at the section. So mm. I had to spend so much of time in drafting just one petition because I didn't have a senior. Mm. So I was very disillusioned. I was I was not sure what I was doing back then. Mm. And then I got an offer uh, from the law firm in the United States if you want to come and work mm. here for some time. Mm. But let me explore. I'm very young. Uh, mm. I was not married. Mm. Let me, why not, you know, explore it. Mm. So... For the six, I went to United States and then a couple of years I worked and came back and then again started working here. Hmm. But I, didn't, I never had any senior per se in high court uh, to guide me or whatever I've done is something on my own. Hmm. I've done it. As far as consumer court and insurance matters is concerned, I used to work uh, for a few months under one senior, Mr. M.J. Parikh. Hmm. Uh, he was a two senior lawyer. He had advertised actually in newspaper that he's looking for some advocate. And hmm. I had just come back from U.S. Uh, hmm. setting up an office of the U.S. firm. So hmm. I just casually met him. And then we found out some common contacts. And I worked for him for about six, eight months just to learn. Hmm. Uh, because I was already earning through the U.S. firms. I was not interested in money from that angle. Hmm. But I used to work hard a lot. From morning 9 to 2, I used to work with him drafting cases on insurance side. Hmm. From 2, I had would have lunch to 30 I would go to my US office then work up to 12 at night mm. go to sleep at 1 30 again wake up and go back to office at night so I used to work from 9 a.m to 12 to 12 31 at night mm. practically every day mm. so that's how everything shaped up for me without any senior so uh, mm. somehow I just started I would not advise something that to anybody else mm. I always believe you should work under somebody initially at least so you get to learn every case does not become a challenge for you because you've seen how your senior deals with cases how he deals with clients how he right. charges fee for, uh, so there is something what i have done i would not advise to anybody right. it's always good to get a swimming coach and learn how to swim rather than Correct. you know jumping in the pool and then you know nearly drowning and then coming back so that's how i shaped up right sir so you, for how, what, how many years you had been in U.S. at then? About a couple of years. Uh, then I came back and for one or two years again, I worked from India because they wanted to set up an office here. Hmm. So it was my moral duty for them uh, You set up an office. That office is still here. I hmm. don't work, uh, but I help them. I recruit the staff, uh, so train people for about six to 12 months because their working style is very different. Hmm. So I train staff and then I left. Uh, working there and started my own practice. So what when, was it not difficult for you to have your you know, established income and then to again come back to yes, it, was, it was it was very difficult. First uh, few months uh, I, the first thing I did was I established my office without any matters. Hmm. Uh, first thing I did was purchase a TV so I couldn't watch cricket matches because I didn't have any work. Hmm. So all day all, I would have nothing back there. I would have one or two files at best. So what mm. can you do? I mean, 24 hours a day. So I would watch TV or read books or do nothing. Mm. Mm. So that's how I started. It was very challenging. It was, and it was not that I was just 22 year old. By then mm. I was married, so I had responsibility. I had some money saved up, but mm. I was determined that someday 
I'll do good in this field. I was uh, had the determination with me. Hmm. So that's how I survived through my self resolve rather than anything else. Right. So what actually, which, which, what, where have you started your survival from then? Because, you know, I may tell you, sir, I, even I may, I am having many friends. I am, I am, I did my law in 2003 and then been practicing till now. But my colleagues who had been in to law firms, they actually want to come out from the law, law firm, but they could not come out because of the right. monthly salaries that they are getting. And so, so. now you will be a motivation, motive, motivation to them, to you know, to make them understand that if they actually want to come out, this should be the, this would be the roughly difficulties that they will be facing. But ultimately, you know, it will be always advisable to have your independent practice. They will, they will face. I had my after three months, I had an office boy. Hmm. I didn't have much to pay him or give him work. Hmm. And he was getting bored. After 15 days, he said, I'm leaving your job. I said, why? He said, I'm bored. Hmm. I don't hmm. have any work. What will I do sitting all this? So I said, okay. Uh, hmm. And he was not at all educated. So I said, what do you enjoy watching in TV? He said, hmm. the only thing I enjoy is Tarak Mehta. I said, hmm. okay. You can watch my TV and watch Tarak Mehta while I read. Don't worry. So hmm. that's how I spent my initial days. That I, even to motivate my office boy, it was a challenge for me, let alone motivating myself. Mm -hmm. I didn't have many files or many much work to do, but I was only thing I had was determination. I was, I was so, so strongly. So, question is, sir, how it has started then? What that start, has sparked I, the thing? One thing, one thing led to other because when I came, I had started my practice before going to US. So I had those contacts with me, and they were very happy with my work when I left. So when I came back. And I telephoned them. They were there. they were very happy. They said I did not get uh, the kind of service that you used to give to us. So we'll start work if you want. I said that would be great. So some advocates started uh, giving me work. So mm -hmm. one became two, two became three. That's how it started. Right. By the time I had, I was decently doing good in terms of drafting and insurance matters because I was working with that senior. Mm -hmm. Somehow I met one insurance company officer uh, once. Mm. And he had seen the kind of drafting I did. So he was looking for a new lawyer, not the mm. established ones who are already seniors. He said, mm. I'll give you a chance. I'll give you five matters and see mm. your performance. Mm. Uh, if you do well, then I'll give you more matters. I said, I need only five matters. Just give me a chance. I'll show you mm. positively, not showing in terms of, you know, I may be kind of. Mm. Mm. I'll show you my good performance. If you're happy, you continue. Right. So that the first insurance company officer I met, uh, he said, okay, I'll give you a chance. He gave me two or three matters. Mm. When he gave me the first matter, I didn't have my own office also. So I, I was so embarrassed to give my address. Mm. I didn't, even, didn't have an office. So I gave him my home address. This is my address. You can courier it to mm. me. He sent me the first courier and uh, it didn't even reach on the first day. So mm. I was so scared. My first matter, courier does not reach. So I practically went to the courier office to get the courier. I was so excited. Mm. get that one first matter. First matter. Mm. Oh, yeah, so four or five matters I got. He was happy with the work. I was, I was because I came back from you, I was very professional in mm. terms of dealing emails, phone calls, contacts, uh, drafting. Mm. Mm. They were very happy with the way I drafted because I'd learned there uh, how to draft uh, internationally, how to mm. petitions are drafted. So mm. they were very impressed with the drafting part. So mm. I got five matters, then more matters, then one insurance company, then some other insurance company was also looking. So mm -hmm. one became two, two became three. Now I have many insurance companies uh, mm -hmm. that I deal with. Right. So that was just a stroke of luck or hard work. I don't know what it is. But somehow God is always with you if you work hard. That's what I believe. Right. Sir, so you do you want, do you like to name some persons to whom you would like to attribute your success to? It may be your clients, it may be your seniors, it may be your juniors, anyone whom you attribute your success. There are many people to start with. It would be my, obviously, my mother because she was an advocate. Though we were in different towns, so there was very limited help that I could mm. get from her. Mm. Uh, so that would be the starting point. My mm. father also because he was much, very much into reading. Mm. Where I got the habit of reading. So parents, obviously, they were... Uh, professional so that's how basics I got from them hmm. then I went to the district government leader's office for three years uh, hmm. so Mr. GK but his name I, hmm. I'm still in touch with him so he and then uh, Mr. MJ Parikh for the insurance part 
Mm. I learned from him for a few months how how to deal with matters. Mm. That was my first uh, interaction in terms of insurance matters. Mm. So those are two four people who come to my mind who with whom I started, uh, mm. and then one thing led to another. Right. So do you have any mentor or an idol in the legal profession? And nobody per se. You learn one thing from everybody. I don't think everybody is bad or everybody is good. Every person or every advocate has some good qualities. Mm-hmm. So I was like observing every advocate, even in courts, I, because I didn't have a senior. So I would sit in court and observe how the advocates are arguing. So one mm-hmm. ar- advocate might be good at arguing. One advocate might be good at dealing with queries or you know diverting the attention of the court. Some advocate could be good in drafting. I used to read every, how everybody would draft. So I don't have any X, Y, or Z person as a mentor, uh, but some good aspect from everybody I've learned. In, mm. Even in, uh, when I was in US, uh, my uh, bosses there, you know, they were so good in drafting uh, the, the way they used to draft. Mm. So the, how they would deal with people, my perception of dealing with people changed after I went there. I'll tell you just one small instance. Uh, when I was there, and they, once we went to a restaurant, mm. they disclosed to me that uh, how we conduct interviews in U.S. or at least in our firms. They said mm. you take the potential candidate to a restaurant, mm. uh, and you just sit and observe how he deals with the waiters, mm. because everybody speaks softly to their bosses, but nobody speaks softly to their persons below them. Correct. So if we observe that the potential candidate is very soft with the waiter, mm. we would hire that person hmm. that opened my eyes because we in India we are used to always you know, talking roughly with the waiters when you go to a restaurant True. Hey, wo le kya, wo le kya. True. so that is you learn very small things from every advocate so that is some even today I never shouted my office boy I speak hmm. very softly with my office boy I never hmm. schooled him on this I never schooled him hmm. so you pick up uh, Somebody is good at arguing, drafting. So you pick up one nuance from every advocate. So no, no single person, but one good quality from many persons. Okay. So how do you prepare a matter? How do you prepare? Once you get the row briefs, how do you prepare? What is the process that you uh, undertake? Okay, eighty percent of work uh, which I get or most people get is what we are used to doing. Hmm. So uh, insurance matters I'm used to doing. I don't need to do much research or I get bail matters or private matters. I don't need to get, uh, do much research. But there are 20% of matters take up more time. Hmm. So there would be some CPC matter uh, where some order so-and-so, rule so-and-so. I'm not used to dealing with 10 matters a day in such uh, fields. Hmm. So in those matters I have to research it more. So I go to my legal software, try to find out uh, some cases based on that. Hmm. Just give Google search, random Google search, find out some articles or some judgments on that uh, law point. Hmm. So first, uh, quashing matter I got for domestic violence. Uh, hmm. So I researched four or five cases on how quashing matters were dealt, how hmm. judges drafted, you know, what judgments were cited. Hmm. So 20% of work uh, takes more time when more research is involved. So I take up books. I like books. Uh, books I take up. Or then, or find out from software uh, some legal research, and then only I draft. Also, I took take out annexures first, and then I draft. So mm-hmm. there is a linear sequence as to how I'm drafting. So if there are in civil matters, usually there are more annexures. Mm-hmm. So first, I mark all the annexures A to B, C, C, D, E, F. Mm-hmm. Then in linear sequence, I draft. Mm-hmm. That is. Uh, Something I found it easier to do once Got there it. is uh, the inactive already marked and taken out. Mm. Uh, I put a U pin or whatever and segregate from the main file. Mm. Uh, that's uh, the style of working I have. And also, basic mm. draft I give it to my office uh, colleagues because they also mm. need to learn and it also saves my time as well. So, even right. interns draft in my office. Many of the interns come to my office and say, This is the first time we've actually drafted. So right. In other offices, we don't get a chance to draft. In my office, the rule is first draft is always made by my office colleagues. I never draft from uh, you know first point onwards. Mm. So I, it saves my time also, and they also get to learn. Correct. So uh, that's how the working is in my office. Right. So as you said, you are passionate about cricket. Do you still pursue your passion by playing cricket? Very much. I don't get to play because I don't get much time. Some of my friends we do on and off. You know, once in two or three months. 
go and play mm. box cricket now we don't go to playground because now by age you uh, you know your bones will not work as much as they do so we play mm. box cricket once in a while but watching mm. and following cricket is still religiously something i follow uh, uh, every day cricket info is my bible daily bible mm. i have to read it five times or 10 times a day i read <laughs> all the articles in between two matters mm. most advocates are playing games uh, mm. uh, i'm always reading cricket for or i'm on twitter reading what you know stars are saying or any articles are published uh, mm. always either on cricket and fall on twitter between two matters because you know in ad, in law field we are always waiting for our chance one matter of your other gives 80% 90% of time is waiting only 10% of time is what we argue actually from in our court hours but 90% of time is my spent on twitter or you know reading on cricket or something uh, that's how uh, but still i'm very passionate about uh, cricket and uh, movies and all my hobbies would you like to play in future if you if you get the opportunity i, I, I future i mean i cannot play it now is it's now too many years have passed but still we do play in you know box as i said in box cricket we still play uh, and i still hate losing when i'm in box cricket right in my team whenever we play i cannot lose i mean that's that's the i always am a cricketer first and then i'm an advocate Right. all the qualities i inherited from cricket don't lose you know you, do you play with the uh, high, high court team that we have do you I, play with that no i don't i used to play for a couple of years but i stopped playing because it's i would return it give it given in writing as well it's monopolized or even high court teams mm-hmm. there are fixed number of players that they are playing fixed number of captains in, in rotation oh. x person will be captain mm-hmm. next year y person is friend will be a captain even in practice they don't give chance to others oh uh, I'm, i'm very unhappy with the way they deal with uh, you know cricket mm. tournament that tournament was there to you know have camaraderie and friendship you know casual you play and have fun now mm. it has become like a professional tournament where you don't get a chance mm. only top players will get batting you know bowling you will get might get one over that was not the purpose original purpose of the cricket tournament so after two years i stopped going right so how are you utilizing your time during this loca- lockdown lockdown i have two kids uh, they are twins two years so mm. all day i spent only after them i barely get time for <laughs> anything else. oh absolutely mm. no i'm the only person <laughs> except in the lockdown who is not home so if That's i want true. to watch the net i found mm. want a netflix movie or i want to draft a file i have to get up early i have to put an alarm i am the only person who puts alarm twice a day in the afternoon yeah. in the sleep even i go i they take a nap small nap i have to put alarm get up draft by the time they wake up even in the morning right. i have to wake up early just yeah. sleep at 1 at night i have to wake up at 6 or 7 just to draft oh. so i am i am i my i got a friend request at 10 30 in the morning let's play online ludo we have nothing to do i said sorry i don't <laughs> in lockdown you don't have no, time i said sorry in lockdown yeah. i don't have twins two years self explanatory <laughs> oh, yeah yeah self explanatory so my life is totally crazy lockdown totally right. no time you know, for myself but now but it's a, it's good part that you could spend your time with uh, upcoming so much of time. <laughs> yes because otherwise i would never get so much because as you know in our profession we 24 hours a day we are working you know, mentally at least even in sleep uh, we are working so i never get time uh, i work from morning 8 am to 10 pm literally every day so i don't get time so this uh, in a way it's a blessing which has turned mm-hmm. out for me Uh, i would not i will in the in, even in the future i will not get to spend so much of time as i'm getting right now mm. so la- I mean, the question is what changes do you expect to see in the legal fraternity post this lockdown after we all had a great chance to, to self realize i think the main aspect not for me personally but from the client's perspective and the briefing advocates and everybody is there is nothing urgent as you know in our profession every case that we get is always urgent right. even though the matter would have been dismissed by the district court two months back but as soon as the courier lands in your office it suddenly becomes file ho gaya file ho gaya file ho gaya file ho gaya that urgency true, true. always with the clients true. you can never satisfy your clients in terms of urgency mm-hmm. i hope by this lockdown everybody will have you know that in hindi there is a word called thaharao right i hope they have a thaharao in their life ha time de do bhaiya do din to de do as soon as a courier lands the stopwatch starts in their mind 
Right. Now it has to be filed. You know, and even on the board, it has to come on the next day in high court. As you know, once mm. you file in civil matters, it will take at least a week. Even your bail matters take mm. four to five days. Very true. Uh, you remove office objections, affidavit, this, that, typing, mm. Mm. so many aspects to it. But people don't seem to have, uh, you know, that, that patience. patience. Correct. Patience they don't have. So I hope mm. poses lockdown clients have patience. And you and me will not, it will not make a difference to us. Right. But I hope. You know, mm. clients will have that tehrav in their life. Now, there's nothing like urgent. Right. So, do you have any advice to me, as in in my career at this point? I know. Uh, you are... I mean, uh, career you are of... Too, yeah. I don't have the caliber or experience to advise you. You are you know, far more knowledgeable. Uh, let me rephrase the question. Not uh, in my career as such, but do you expect any changes that you want in uh, advocates of the Supreme Court uh, perform, in, in the manner in which advocates for the Supreme Court perform? I think more or less they are, you people as a fraternity are doing very much uh, fine. I, I don't think there's much advice I could give. Mm. Uh, I, I don't, to be honest, I don't get that many matters. Like per month, I would not be sending 20 matters a month. So mm. I don't get to deal with, uh, I deal with you mostly. I don't have, I, I, I uh, not, don't deal with too many. Uh, no, it's not ex such your dealing with the uh, with. I with, understand. I, in, or, in general, in general, if I speak, our I, our I, behavior I towards our briefing advocates, our behavior towards our judges, our behavior towards our clients. Any any anything that you suggest more, us to more change or, in? More or less. No, no, I think more or less it's absolutely fine. You are, every high court advocate or you know everybody looks up to Supreme Court finally. Mm. in every manner so i think you people are doing fine there is nothing much i could advise sitting here and mm. tell you this is what you are you know as a fraternity you need to do mm. so i don't think there is much advice i could give uh, whatever you people are doing i'm sure you are doing very well uh, so i don't think i have much to give in terms of advice to you people right sir any 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 thing that you want to tell to legal fraternity that you have in your mind at the end um and tell nothing legal, fraternity. Much. legal fraternity i was reading an article i even posted it on my one of my social networking sites that mm. uh, 98 percent of advocates would be struggling right now it's only two percent of advocates will not have any problems Mm. Uh, most of the advocates will have problems in terms of you know work, uh, not getting fees, mm. income might have stopped. But mm. I think it, that's being faced by everybody, even poor laborers to advocates to everybody. So we are right. you know different. Mm. Uh, so this is just a dark phase that we are fast passing through. Uh, everything passes by. Time is a great healer. Uh, keep your savings intact. Don't spend too much. Mm. They always used to say that save for the rainy day. This mm. is the kind of rainy day, you know, we always never uh, deciphered in our mind, but you never know what you need. So keep some cash, handy cash in terms of not black money cash, but you know, money handy in your accounts, uh, which you could use someday. Don't spend too much. Uh, you never know what you could you know, uh, want in the future. So I think just managing your financial resources in a much better manner would be very helpful for the advocate because many of the advocates are not good financial planners. At least mm. I am not. Uh, mm. I'm very bad at financial planning, so I leave it to my you know, parents to do because I don't get time also. Right. I'm not good at financial planning. So right. that is something we should all learn you know, just to better uh, planning in terms of finances. Mm. Thank you very much, sir. It was great interacting with you. Thank you so much. I will, I will keep you posted with the updates on which we post sure. your video. Thank you very much. Sir. Sure. No problem. Thank you. Bye-bye.